Hey, how we doing? Oh, it's blimmin' hot here. How we doing? Yeah. 30 degrees. I mean, my temperature thing here is saying 27 at the moment, but I don't think that's very accurate. Because outside, it is actually 30 degrees at the moment. So, 30 degrees? You guys that live abroad, that's probably nothing. That's just like, phew, you know, normal weather. But for us in the UK, anything above 20 is like a heat wave, really. Well, I'm exaggerating a bit, but certainly mid to high 20s is very hot for us over here. We're just not used to it. We're a bunch of wusses over here. But um, yeah, absolutely boiling. I've literally not been back in the door probably about half an hour. So I've just been up, spent the day up visiting uh, my oldest son and his family up in uh, Bridgewater today. So I've been driving for about three hours. So uh, all interesting stuff, but luckily there's air con in the car. So it's actually cooler in the car than it is outside. So happy days. Right, who've we got in? Well, it looks like we may have lost a few off the top. I've got Harb up the top at the moment. So I'm speaking to David. I don't know if that's Mr. Tipton himself. I don't know. I said it seems to get later and later. I vote we move him to Oz so we can get some sleep. <laughs> so yeah, apologies for um, for those of you down under because I think there's about, is it five hours time difference or more than that? So um, I think normally when I go on for two o'clock, it's knocking on for 11, isn't it? So it must be early hours of the morning now in Australia. So <laughs> fair play to anybody that stay, stayed up. But yeah, that's the reason I'm on late today because I was down visiting the family, well, up visiting the family in Bridgewater. Les is in, I Les, 29 at Les's. 29 uh, with Nick. That's Rob Cross. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, straight in with the super chat. 32. Oh, I'll tell you what I've got here, look. I've got some emergency, emergency stuff here. So I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Anthony, how are you? Two are in East London. It's currently 31 degrees. Yeah, East London's supposed to be hotter even more. I think that they're, they're looking at up in, up in the 40s either Monday or Tuesday. Crazy, crazy temperatures for over here. Mac Vision, how are you? Timothy. Hi, Timothy. Timothy Cam. Luigi. How are you doing, Luigi? Thomas Kitts. Hi, Thomas. Afternoon, Mick McGinn. Luigi, 39 degrees there. Where on earth are you, Luigi? <laughs> or S S Sylvain, sorry. Is it Sil Sylvain or Luigi? I'm not really sure. I'm still catching up with the chat, people, so bear with me. Afternoon, Jess. Thanks, mate. You know, roasted fox. I'm not surprised. I tell you what, it's too hot. It is too hot to sit outside. And uh, unfortunately, when, when we've been away today, our, our parasol was blown out. We've had quite strong winds here, as well as the, the, the heat. We've had, hot, we've had winds as well, and um, it's whipped our, our parasol out of, the, um, out of its base, and it's punctured the, um, the top of our, our um, like lazy spa pool thing. So an expensive trip for us today. Derek, how are, you? how are you, mate? You did put a message on this morning, but you're not knocked off again. Yeah, it does refresh after all, Derek. Simap, how are you? Afternoon again, Les. Hi, Rich. Very hot up in Bath. I expect it is, mate. I expect it is. As I say, we've been up to, um, to Bridgewater earlier, and it was just knocking 30 there. It was 30. It was 30 in Bridgewater earlier. Doug, how are you, mate? Getting New York summer weather over here. We certainly are. Ben, how are you doing? 32 degrees. Whoa. Boiling. And I mean, I'm very fortunate that I've got uh, a weather station kindly given to me by, by, um, by my friend Rob over in Ireland. So uh, I can actually uh, see exactly what the weather's doing here very accurately, which is much better than just looking at the forecasts. Afternoon, Colin. You were first and Derek was second. <laughs> Andy Beck, how are you, mate? Emergency Bishop's Finger. I've got some emergency supplies here. 26.8. Afternoon, Harvey. 
38 to 39 over there tomorrow, well, up the, or across there, and 40 plus on Tuesday. Crazy. South of France. Very nice, Luigi. I have frequented the south of France before. I went to Saint Tropez and Nice camping once upon a time, and that was this lovely part of the country, actually, south of France. 30 for Benji, 32 for Harvey, 26. 27 for the west coast of Ireland. Aircon running in upstairs bedroom, but struggling to do much and using one kilowatt. Well, I've got a fan over here. All the windows upstairs are open. There's, there is a nice breeze coming through, but it's just hot. It's blowing hot air in, that's the trouble. So the fan, I've got a fan on my desk over here, which is helping quite a lot. So hopefully that's not interfering with the audio too much. Apologies if it is, but without it, I wouldn't be able to do a stream, so. It will all end with one big bang. <laughs> Let's hope not, Derek. I did see something about there's a comet on the way or something. I... <sighs> no windows open. Yeah, there's, there's a big sort of thing in there that if you keep the curtains closed and the windows shut, you don't let the hot air in. Now, certainly that's worked for us in the lounge where the dogs sleep most of the day. So we keep the curtains drawn there and the window shut. And uh, it does seem to be the coolest room in the house, which is really strange because you think if you've got it all shut up, it's going to be really hot, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm sure there's some logic behind that. You got your fan on, Benji, have you? You're at the beach, Mac Vision. Very nice too. But don't take it in the water. Don't take the iPad in the water. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so let's have a look at the emergency rations. What do you think? <laughs> oh dear, you've got to be done on it. I've got an ice bucket now that you're going to be disappointed because this is all alcohol free. Uh, my, one of my neighbours across the road has asked me if I can give him a lift in later on to uh, drop his car off for MOT. So I'm on, I'm on the soft stuff today. But this has been in the fridge for uh, a few days, and I've got the old, I've dug the old ice bucket out, so we're <laughs> we're going to be drinking cool stuff. <laughs> uh, you've done the same in your bedroom, Harvey. Saying the same, yeah, it does work, doesn't it? Aston, big old Panasonic fan in here. Aston Towers, and it's still blooming hot. Yeah, it is. Cool setup, it is a cool setup. Isn't it? <laughs> See an ice bucket. Well, there you go. It's actually branded as well. Look, back in the I've had this for years. I think I got this from my brother for Christmas one year, complete with beer in it. And uh, you can easily um, find a, a Christmas present for me just just beer. Beer works fine. But, uh, yeah, my brother uh, got me that, Greg, many many years ago. And I've had it for years, and we've been taking this out in the tent as well, to be honest, because it's been pretty hot out there of an evening. So uh, it's been used to uh, transport various cool drinks out to the tent. Windows open at night, closed in the day, Thomas. Yeah. Afternoon, Multi. Good preparation for the heat wave. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to open one of these because, as I say, I've just come back from a fairly long drive. I've got a can in the bottom, actually, so I'm going to do the can first, I think. <laughs> Strange thing as well, ice in, a, in an ice bucket does seem to keep for quite some time, doesn't it? But, yeah, there you go. <laughs> We've got one of those fridges that does the, um, does the ice... Uh, so yeah, going in with a, a Bavaria, 0.00% look, but it's cold. Wayne, how you doing mate? Fridge full of cider, yeah, I've got some cider waiting for later on, um, Anthony, don't you worry about that. We went in the shop and specifically picked some up earlier. Surprised they had any left actually. And that will be having ice actually in it. I'm not normally a fan of... Um, sticking ice in in beer and cider but to be fair if you've had a cider with um with ice in it before it does actually work i know it it weakens it it, it makes it a bit weaker doesn't it when it melts but um it does it does work 
and it is drinkable. If you drink it pretty quick, then it's still fairly strong anyway. So <laughs> happy days, isn't it? Benji can't open his windows. You're in prison. <laughs> Pepperidge. Am I going to do the ice bucket challenge later? No, definitely not. <laughs> You've already had some Bira Peronis. Isn't it Bira Moretti? Or, or you've got Bira and Peronis? Did you give me a telling off for last week? <laughs> um, they did give me a telling off as such, because what, what a lot of people don't, don't seem to, to understand is that you can play music on YouTube. You can do it. It's no problem. You can do it. But um, what happens is YouTube have got a bit of software that detects copyrighted songs and copyright stuff. So what they do is they, they actually um, they demonetize the video for me. So I, I wouldn't have earned anything off of, off of um, last week's video. And typical, it's got 5.6 thousand views on it last time I looked. But uh, yeah, I won't earn anything off that video, but I don't get penalized, but uh, you know, I don't get any penalties or anything like that because um, you know, what happens is, is this bit of software actually names each tune. So when you click on last week's video in the comments section, you'll have a massive great list of tunes that I played. I think there's 49 in there. <laughs> I think it's, it might be a record. I can't remember what my record was, but um, I think there's 49 in there that last count on my emails, I had 49, but they go up every day as, as someone discovers another one. So there you go. Anyway, cheers, everybody. I've got to have a drink of this before it warms up. Like Danish native, are you having a heat wave? Over there, predicts it's 40 degrees, 39. Yeah, it's not been quite so hot as that here. Um, Danish, but it's been blimmin' boiling far more than we're ever used to. And this might come in handy. Fancy making a mixtape? I can do you a mixtape if you want to take the cassette recorder on. Cassette recorder's in the tent at the moment, Wayne. Trying to take Spanky! Oh, Spanky, I haven't seen you for ages, mate. You lost one of your dogs on Friday night, so this is in memory of Brooke. Oh, sorry to hear that, Spanky. That's a, that's a shame. Simon. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that, mate. Gutted. I mean, they're part of the family, aren't they? So uh, it is like losing a, a family member. So, yeah, really sorry for that, mate. You're searching for a Mega Drive to swap it for. I <laughs> oh, don't, don't worry. I'm sure we can sort someone out. I'm sure we can sort something out, Wayne. Let's just move that camera. Will that camera move? Yes. No, wrong camera. <laughs> wrong camera. It's this one here. That's that one I've got to move. Yeah. Searching for a Mega Drive. Yeah, I, I do fancy an old Mega Drive. So Rob's asking, do you think global warming is changing? Well, it, it is changing, isn't it, Rob? That's, that's sort of common knowledge, really. Yes. Good point, Simap. I was going to mention that. Um, Man Cave Workshops put a video out today. So if you haven't seen it, then go and look at um, Sean's video, which he's popped out today. Let me see if I can find it for you, and I'll pop a link in. So if you're not subscribed to Sean, then um, let's go to my screen. So this is the video, Man Cave Workshop. I won't play it because um, you can watch it yourself. So if you're not subscribed to Sean, then subscribe. Um, he is going to need some help. He's one of these people. He's one of these people that won't... I'm not saying he won't accept help, but he certainly won't ask for help. So he's going to get some help from me because I'm going to send him up some stuff um, when he's sorted. 
So um, the thing is, at the moment, he's still waiting for his um, garage to be rebuilt, and that's going to take quite some time. So probably not much point send him, sending him anything as yet, because he's got nowhere to put it. Well, he has. He can put it in the house, but he hasn't got a workshop to put this stuff in. But um, I'm going to be putting together a box of uh, bits and pieces to send up to Sean. So um, hopefully I've got the wrong camera on. Hopefully he'll be back up and running soon. Anyway, he's a lovely chap, Sean. Really, really nice bloke. So uh, well worth supporting him. Well worth supporting him. Subbed well on Wayne. <laughs> Sean's a good lad. He's a good lad. Really passionate about his radios and he does a bit of bit of guitar stuff he's uh, he's a really lovely bloke Sean so we've got to make sure he's sorted BBC predicting 43 degrees there for you Wayne living heck air cone full of blast all day <laughs> Harvey hates the cold so yeah the man cave workshop um, if you don't know the story basically Sean was it was actually out in his garage one night yapping to me on whatsapp we were just like exchanging messages and pictures, having a, having, having a yap. We normally do that on a Saturday night, normally. I think it was a Saturday night. And um, about 11 o'clock, it all went quiet. And I didn't know what was going on, but I thought, well, Sean's, Sean's nodding off on his, on his chair, so I'll add on up to bed. And uh, anyway, next morning, well, ne next, yeah, next day, he, uh, he said apologies, but um, my garage burnt down last night while I was in it. So he was actually in his garage. It was an explosion from next door's shed, which I don't know whether it blasted into Sean's garage or it caught Sean's garage on fire. Sean was actually in it when this happened. So he legged it out of there and um, all hell broke loose after that. Fire brigade, police, there's been all sorts of issues up there. So. I'm sure if you watch Sean's video, you'll get an idea of what, what he's lost. He's lost a lot. He's lost a hell of a lot. You know, he's insured, so a, a lot of it can be replaced, but there's a lot of it like his old radios and that, and bits and pieces. I don't know if he's lost any guitars or anything like that, but um, all of that sort of stuff is sort of sentimental, and you can't really re replace that. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll be able to get him a few bits and pieces together to... Uh, to get his interest back because he is going to rebuild his workshop and uh, he's making plans he's drawn up plans of what he wants to do with it and all the rest of it so uh, I wish him all the best so there you go so uh, what are we doing here uh, but, uh... Yeah, not not at the mo moment. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Racing Demon, Elsie's on the bench today. Yeah, I t I th I'm not 100% sure yet what we're going to do with it, um, Mike. I don't think Sean would want money. Um, so so <laughs> Sean's not one of those that would want money. But um, we could we could give it to Sean. We could give it to Sean. Um, the, Auction, auctioning, I don't know how to do, Mike. Um, I think there is a site where you can do like a raffle. So we could raffle it, get some money together, then perhaps buy Sean something. But I don't think he'd like money, put it that way. Well, I know he wouldn't. I know he wouldn't. I know Sean pretty well, by the way. So thank you very much, Mike. And this is Mike's radio we're going to have a look at today. Elsie and Elsie is the name of the radio if you didn't already guess Yeah, it is, certainly is Wayne He's lost uh, a lot of sort of personal items, you know all these tools that he's built up over the years They're all gone You know, I think he had some he had some tools that were his dad's that sort of stuff. So yeah Yeah, no good ideas though. Um, Mike was we'll, we'll sort of something out definite Michael Hyde afternoon. How are you? So I've got me, I've got me Grosh, but also lurking behind the Grosh is the Bush TR-130, look. Now this, this was named by Mike. Mike sent this over with another radio, and I can't remember what the other one was off the top of my head. Mike, I was going to look it up, but I literally just have not had time. I just haven't had time. 
so uh, they do make a reproduction one of these but this is one of the original ones i can't remember what the the later one's called i think it's still a tr130 i think when you look on the back you've got like a figure of eight a figure of eight plug on it and i think it's even got fm on it hasn't it although this yes it's got fm on it the other one but um this one um this one came with another radio that Mike um, gave me, uh, and we did a giveaway on that one. But this one was broken. The courier had damaged this one. Yeah, the the insides have been damaged by the courier. Now, I, I, it was a year, well, not quite a year ago that Mike sent these up to me. We have given away the other one, but this one is still what's left. It was too long ago, yeah. Grid is more see-through on the modern ones as well. I have got a modern one somewhere, and I've got another one of these in beige, which doesn't look particularly nice. I love this one. This looks really smart. Um, Cosmetic-wise, you can see there's um, a little bit of a thing going on with the paintwork on the front. So this is a metal grill, and it's been sprayed with like a you can't really see it if i hold it straight on like there that's it's gone <laughs> but if you hold it in the in the right light there's there's been a bit of touch up here and the paint's just peeling away there so this has got to come off and be resprayed um not exactly sure how that comes off yet i have oh, I, have i had i don't think i've had one of these apart i've had the back off but i've never actually fully stripped one down so it's got a quite a nifty uh, display on it. Medium wave, long wave only. Um, and it's got this band spread as well. And I think what that does is it, it spreads the band out to get you some extra stations, I believe. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much, I think, the long wave band, but it spreads it out a bit more. It's got Luxembourg 208 on the dial. I don't think you can quite see that. Let me, um, what can I do here? Let's get you in a bit closer. Let's get you in a bit closer. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that there. Now, look. So you've got BS, BS, medium wave and long wave. And uh, the BS is in orange, which is Luxembourg on 208. And it's got West, BBC 3. Well, 200, 198 is now, um, we've got 196 and 200. So radio four is bang on in the middle of those if you push the band spread. So I think basically it just spreads that particular section of the uh, long wave band out. So say here we've just got our push buttons and this one is the tuning. Now that, that one's got recessed somehow i'm not really sure what's gone on there so that's um that looks like it's been banged inwards yeah it looks like the whole the whole lot's dropped down in there and on the other side we've got tone if i can get it in in the shot without it blowing the camera out tone on off and volume there's a bit of a a dink in the back grill as well which we need to deal with so it's gonna have to come come out and be hammered flat I don't think that'll ever come out but so we can get it looking a lot better than that and of course we've got a product of the rank organization and that doesn't mean rank as in nasty <laughs> the rank I don't know how many companies formed the rank organization but Bush was one of the rank organization companies and uh, yeah you can see that just that little patch in the paint and um, that's embossed into the chrome as is the TR130 so there you are quick overview of the radio now I haven't managed to download anything on this because I am my time but um, it is a nice nice radio yeah I think you did Mike I look back through through the uh, exchange of um, of messages we had when you sent this and you have zapped the transistors so that's one job we don't have to do 
I don't think you did the capacitors, though. I think you said you hadn't done the capacitors, and you'd leave that to me, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Les is saying about the band spread for old Radio Luxembourg. There's a Murphy version of that same radio, just different grill and dial face. Yes, I think I've got one of those as well, Pepperidge. So thanks for that. 208 brings back memories. Yes, some, some of the radios actually had a 208 button. I've got a Bush TR82 in the other room. Now, I was, I was going to do uh, a video on the Bush TR82s today because I've got a few of them. I've got a few different ones. So I was going to do that today, but um, I've got one that I need to get up in the loft and get, and it's too hot to get it. So this one's come out, and um, I was going to do a giveaway on this one, so this one might be given away, but we might see what, if we can do something with Sean on it. So we'll see. We'll see. You bid at one this week with Radio Caroline on it. Interesting. Just fired over a photo Discord for the TR-82. Uh, no worries. There's, there's a few different versions of it, Sam Wayne. Well, there's quite a few different versions of the TR-82, and there's a really good website that you can go on and have a look. So I'll, I'll fire you a link across to that later. Simap Lopes in black. Bretsky, how you doing, Brett? Medium way for the band spread, lots of stations, stations close together, many pirates back in the 60s. Right, okay. The O208 was the best station in the 1960s and 70s. I do remember, 208 was Luxembourg, wasn't it? It was Radio Luxembourg on 208. I'm sure it was. Because I can remember listening to it in, the, in my old Ford Capri. <laughs> back, back in the day. In my 1970 Ford Capri, was it? Yeah, 1970 mine was. The car was 1970, but I got it in 1982, 83. Something like that. But yeah, it used to be one of the best stations of a night time. Stick the old radio on, on Longwave and um, tune into Radio Luxembourg. It was absolutely brilliant. Always had Radio Luxembourg on a preset, without a doubt. Great tour, yeah was a cracking, uh, cracking station. Um, I, st I thought it was still going, but I don't know when they stopped broadcasting. Ice is still going well. <laughs> For those that have just joined, it's boiling hot in the UK and I've got my ice bucket here with my, um, with my cold alcohol-free beers in it. <laughs> I'm going to get rid, rid of all of those so I can see it. Uh, you just checked it was made between 1959 and 1962. Uh, what's that? The TR82? Yeah. There is a website, a guy that did an article for one of the um, magazines. Uh, he's got a great website. I've, I've put it up before. I think if you go through one of my Christmas videos a couple of years ago, I did the TR82. Uh, TR, ATR82 there, I think, because my nan and granddad had one, and that's how I recognise it. It's instantly recognisable. The TR82. We're, we're deviating because this is a TR130, not a TR82. The TR82 is the one with the round dial and the creamy colour. But yeah, maybe I'll look at those next week if I can. Um... <clears throat> If I can dig the one out in the loft. The one up in the loft is the Volve version, the MB60. So uh, it's sort of part of a set of that type of radios. I've given, well, I sold the rarest one ever made <laughs> to um, Tim, who collects them. So uh, I let that one go to, to him because he, uh, he was at, been after one for years. I managed to pick one up for a very reasonable price. So I let um I let Tim have it. So let me see which ones I've got here. I think I've got one here with the 208 button on it. But let's uh, just, I'll just drag out the classic, the classic TR82, look. This is, have we got, 
Oh, I've even got a battery in that one. <laughs> I did say I had a load of batteries, but I didn't know where they were because they're all stuck in radios somewhere. God, it's blimmin' hot in here. I can't see this being a long stream. <sighs> sorry, sorry, Elsie. I'm just going to put one of your um, one of your distant cousins on here. Look. Now this one. If you buy one of these, what I would suggest you do, if you want a good one, is check this letter in. Firstly, the new modern ones have got a headphone socket in the top, and they've got a wonky U, a plastic wonky U. That's, say wonky, it's squashed in, it doesn't look right. The best ones in my opinion are the ones with the actual metal letters so if you've got one that's got actual metal letters on it then um, it's going to be one of the earlier ones the later ones had plastic lettering on them and that always rubs off and you always see like patches of plastic coming through this has got the chrome lettering on it now you data plate is on the bottom now this is a TR82C C being chrome chrome lettering they did a TR82B which is brass lettering they did a TR82L which has got the Radio Luxembourg button on so they, they did loads and loads of different versions and um, you can see this one's in really good nick um, if you look back through my videos I had one of these exact same one as this in really good condition that was poorly packed and beaten up by one of the couriers and it arrived in pieces so i was pretty gutted but i did manage to get another one in just as good condition we are deviating because this is nothing to do with today's stream but uh, let's just quickly pop the back off again the backs are very fragile on these there's not many of these without a broken back what tends to happen is all the corners break out, but this one, uh, this one's pretty good. Even got this bit of foam on it, look. So uh, this is one of the early ones because the earlier ones had the metal lettering and they also had, if I can find one, yeah, this type of transistor in the, um, IF circuit so you can see there's three of those if I go across there's three of those and they're black uh, black encapsulated ones and that's the reason why this radio is still working because it's got these transistors in it the later ones have the dreaded AF 117s in it which are these Oh, I've dropped that in it. So yeah, the later ones had these type of transistors in. So if you've got one with these type of transistors in, it's highly likely it ain't going to work. Unless you cut off the um, shield wire, which is the second one in. So um, yeah, that's the... this is a more desirable chassis, I think. Saying that, I mean, they, they, they all work very well. So I've got a PP nine in there they work very well but um if you can get one of these earlier ones you're not going to have to mess about with the transistors because they just they just work just pinch that one up again i've done no absolutely nothing to any of these tr82s that i've got so they're all in need of restoration but if i turn that on Golf. Rory McElroy's doing very well, isn't he? I don't think you saw any of that because I was zoomed right out, wasn't I? Oh well. 
Yeah, so I think the ones with the OC transistors are the earlier ones with the metal lettering. You see that is actual metal lettering, that's not plastic. The later ones had plastic lettering and uh, AF117s. And you have got the Chinese knockoff one with the uh, wonky U. You can easily see them. I haven't ever had one of those wonky U's. I, I don't think they're very nice at all. But, um, you know, they look okay, but they just don't look right. So there you are. Deviation. There you go, Wayne. Hopefully that's uh, sorted you right out now. Let's put that down. So we might look at those next week. I'll, I'll dig them out. We'll see. I've got plenty of other stuff to look at here. But, um, yeah, did have a bit of a tidy up this week as well. It is a very classic looking radio, isn't it? It's, it's one of those iconic sort of bits of engineering from the day, isn't it? That everybody recognises. You know, if you think of the 60s and old radios, that is probably one of the ones that was in a lot of houses there's still a hell of a lot of them about but um if you can avoid buying one on ebay or anywhere that posts it then then do because they can easily be damaged in the post all right let's have a look then let's have a look you had a 74 Mercury Capri V6. That's, um, that's the American one, isn't it? I think, um, Danish. Battle of the Giants was one of their programs. You're having a pride of tribute. I can't have a drink till later on, Timothy. Anyways, Retro Radio, how are you, mate? Do I know much about the ITT Chauve Lorenz Touring International 104? Yeah, I, I've I've done a few, well, I've done a couple of those. I've got one here, actually, um, Retro Radio. I've got, uh, I've got one here at the moment. Although I'm not sure if it's the 104 or not. Because they made, they made two or three different versions. Again, I can go and grab that a minute, because I know exactly where that is. Because I bought it with, um, with another radio, and the only way, the guy wouldn't split the radio, so I had to buy this one as well as the um, the Sony SW55, which turned out to be a right dog, and I still haven't got round to um, fixing that one yet. So we're deviating again, which is, is what we do. But um, these radios are quite sought after, really, and they do sound absolutely amazing. I'm just giving it a dust off, because it's been out on the landing been on holiday <sighs> sorry Elsie we really neglected Elsie today but um yeah this is the um I'm gonna have to get the ice bucket out of the way it's too too big for the bench I think this has got batteries in it as well isn't it has it got batteries? No. But the lights are gone. Now this is uh, ITT Storing Touring Studio, Schaubler Ends, multi preset. Oh, this is a 104A. So yes, I have. I've done one of these. I've so I've got one radio, retro radio, and I have repaired one as well which was an absolute pig it took me forever to get that one sorted but yeah <laughs> stunning radio really really good sounds amazing got short waves on it very very well made but horrible to work on if that makes sense got some presets on it as well you can preset three stations very nice so uh, yeah if you need any help with that let me know you'll have to drop me an email right let's catch up with the rest of it best best place to get schematics from in general 
Uh, Radio Museum is probably the best place if you need like just a one place to get schematics. Radio Museum. The Vintage Radio Forum sells schematics and you can buy a, a DVD with thousands and thousands of schematics on it. And the other one that I use quite a lot is Electro Tanya. They, they do a lot of schematics for more modern stuff, although they do do schematics for old stuff as well. Let me just, I'm still catching up with the chat, so apologies. Uh, exactly the same as the one you have there for 50p. God, that's a bargain, Wayne. Mike says he's too got the chrome lettering, the actual chrome, not the plastic chrome. Anthony's saying you used to have one of those, but it stopped working when you were a teenager. Stripped it down, but wish I hadn't. Did you love the bush? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Yeah, weirdly, you have those, but you don't have metal letters on the front. So yours might have been, it could have had the case changed. It could have had another chass uh, case, or um, it could have just been a later production one of it, Wayne. We'll have to compare serial numbers, mate. Afternoon, Derek. Ice cream time, it certainly is. It's going to be fan speed up time in a minute I think because I've got it on setting number one it's gonna to have to go number two you always have black transistors is a simple layer you have one with OC transistors and one with AF 117s have to cut out early the wife wants you to jump into the lake <laughs> very nice too Thomas thanks for joining me mate have a good one enjoy the lake so let me um, let me catch up. I'm still going. I'm still going. Plastic letters. Yeah, you've got a late, later case then, Wayne. Uh, I think I've answered that retro. Yeah. Yes, you you do it with um, do it with LEDs and uh, resistors. Retro radio. You need to put um, put resistors in there and an LED. I can't remember what the voltage is now, but it is, uh, it is, um, what am I trying to say? It is doable. I've, I've done it on the, on the one I repaired and it did work very well, actually. The, the display was much, much nicer than the bulbs. The bulbs had burnt the sort of like, it's like a plastic shield that goes over the top of it. And they'd sort of burnt that and discolored it over the years. So LEDs are much better. They run, uh, they run a lot colder and um, don't take anywhere near the same current. Mercury is Ford. Okay. I knew there was, there was an American car they called the Capri, which was uh, very sort of, what's the word for it? It's like a Thunderbird looking type car. But um, I have seen them over here. Or was that an early Capri over here? I don't know, but there is another car called a Capri that doesn't look anything like the Ford Capri. You might sell it off. German engineering, yeah, they are. But you've got the brown one, so yeah, that's the one is the studio. I'm not sure what the brown one's called, but they're exactly the same inside. Exactly the same. Uh, my email, let's just pop you that up. There's my email, um, Retro Radio. Rob wishes there was a swimming pool outside. You've got one of those engineer. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I got that at Christmas, Mike, because mine packed up. I had quite an expensive one here, and it, it just... All, all the um, threads packed up on the uh, plastic because it had a, an aluminium tube and plastic thread threaded pieces, and the, just the threads went. I've done it with PTFE a couple of times and then I just give up on it in the end and bought that one. But yeah, really, really good. Console Capri, was it, Brett? Yeah, I know. It was, uh, very much looked, looked like a Ford Thunderbird, didn't it? Les went for a swim in the sea yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Les is a bit of a sea swimmer. He likes, it, likes to drop in the sea. I prefer dropping the pub, personally, but... 
Talking about pub, let's get some, let's get this Perlenbacher down my neck. 0.0 Liddell. Eau de Liddell. I think it's little, yeah, little. We're going around the supermarkets at the moment each week, doing our shop in different supermarkets, trying to find out which one is uh, is the most competitively priced for the stuff that we buy because food has gone through the roof price-wise. Yeah, I don't know what you lot uh, think, but you know we're struggling to um, to buy our food every week at the moment because it's gone so expensive. Everything. It's gone crazy over here. It's gone maze. For um, repetitive solar sucking, you can't really beat beat these things for cost. Um, Chris, all the gear, no idea, did a brilliant review video in the week. I don't know if you caught that, but um, if you check out all the gear, no idea, he did a, a review on the Hako version and I actually like that so if this packs up again in the future it's going out the window and I'm gonna get one of those hackos 300 and something quid though so it's not some um, it's not a cheap bit of kit but um, does does work very well by the looks of it comfort break coming soon <laughs> zero alcohol goes straight for you especially cold zero alcohol so let's get rid of my email address I'm sure you don't want to see that on the screen so we need to look at this radio. We need to look at this radio. So on the bottom we've got two feet and they've got open and close arrows on them. So we've got to go to open, open, that bottom comes off and so does the back. But I think there's problems, there's a piece broken off of here, look. So the, um, the courier managed to break a piece off of here. And I think there is lots, lots of bits of damage on this. I'm not 100% sure yet. I know the worst thing is the ferrite's been damaged. But I, I think we, sh we should be able to glue this back together so you can see the, um, the ferret inside. Let's just stand that on it for a minute. So yeah, the courier did a number on this. Um, you can see the ferrite rod's broken, so we're going to have to glue that one back together. So that's one of our jobs today, is to glue the ferrite back together. There is a little chunk missing out of it, but I don't think that's going to affect how it works. I thought I did have a little bag with the... Um, the bits that had snapped off in it. But anyway. Yeah, strangely enough that um Yeah, that top panel looks like I've may have taken that off. Cause these screws are undone, so that's why that knob wasn't sticking through far enough because those screws were undone. Anyway, let's have a look. Like I say, I've not worked on one of these before, so I'm going to try and pull it apart without looking at any of the instructions. Yeah, okay, so we've got a broken off piece there as well. So yeah, it's... Um, I don't know if you can see, but inside here, this bracket here that holds the front on, that's... Um, that's broken as well. But I don't think it's fully broken off that. I think I've got to undo these nuts down here, ease it up and slide it out, I think. And I might have already done this in a previous um, video, but as I say, it was, it was just under a year ago that I looked at this one, so... And this is Elsie, which is also the name of my uh, late um, grandmother. 
or nanny as we used to call her. So uh, my my late nan was um, was Elsie. So we've got to got to fix Elsie up, haven't we? It looks like this is how it comes apart. I mean, I don't hundred percent know, but it looks feasible. Chris put up a great video. Yeah, it was. All right. Yeah, because there was um, there was a bit of battery. There's a battery retention piece in here. I think that was the problem, Mike, wasn't it? The battery was was left in it. That was it, wasn't it? The battery was still in it. That was what um, caused the problem. So I think a battery broke this piece away and smacked into the ferrite and broke the ferrite. I think that was that was the problem. Mike very kindly left me a battery, but um, battery killed it, I think. So hopefully that'll come out now. Sort of wants to come out. It's fighting a little bit. Ah, look at that. How about that for um, engineering then? And we've got our friendly AF117s in here, but Mike says he's zapped these, so it might work. We may have already tried this again on that previous video. So let's um, find the bench supply because I've, I've cleared up. So as per usual, every time you clear up, you lose loads of stuff. So we certainly don't want 24 and a half volts on it. We want uh, nine volts. Right, what do you think then? Is it going to work or not? Is it going to work or not? That is the question. Will she or won't she? Yeah, it was the battery mic because I think the battery smashed up because you can see that this, this piece here, this, there was a piece of plastic sat in there to stop the battery moving. Of course, they've thrown it, obviously. You know, the courier has thrown it and the battery's whacked up that way and smacked the, um, the ferrite, which has pulled it apart that way. And there's a big um, break in it. I, I'm sure somewhere I've got a little baggie with all the parts in it, a little Ziploc bag. I'm sure I have, because I was gonna glue them all back together, but I don't know where. <laughs> I don't know where, so I'm going to, have to see if I can find that. Not essential, I, I can fix it anyway. We've got a spa here, no pool, just run it cool in summer. People are filling their pools with dirt now. Six pints of milk have gone up nearly 70p in a couple of months. It, and the price of food has gone ridiculous. It's gone crazy. Not the easiest set to work on. We've done, done well, Mike, to get those zapped. Mike doesn't think so. Derek doesn't think so. Ben says it will. Come on, let's have some voting. Will it work or won't it? Where are we? On off volume, so let's... Yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a lovely set, Mike. It is a very nice set. As I say, we've got some, this bit of plastic here broken away, which, which is sort of like a case retaining piece, but I don't think it's critical because we've got one lug still left. I might be able to build that up with um, super glue and baking soda, or I've got some epoxy putty. There's lots of ways I can probably um, rebuild that peg if I need to. And 
And the one on the inside there, I can um, glue that back in, I think. I mean, it's very, very thick plastic. It's, it's a well-made radio. I don't know what the date on these is. We might be able to find a date code. I would say we're probably in the mid to late 60s, are we? Let's try to see if I can see a date code on anything here. Sometimes the capacitors have got, them, got it on them. Um, it might be later than that. It's got to be around the 1970 mark with AF117s. It wouldn't be a lot newer than that, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, mid, mid, mid to late, mid, mid 60s to early 70s potentially. No worries, Retro Radio. I'll have a look at that later on, mate, and uh, reply to you. What has Elsie ever been quiet? <laughs> yeah, my mortgage has gone through the roof as well, um, Harvey. Right, so Timothy thinks it's going to work, but not very well. End of the 60s. Oh, uh, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Derek. So I'm sure we can get some more info. I mean, there's a stamp there. It looks like MSP something 272. So it could be February 72. Again, some of this stuff did have quite a long production run on it. I say we don't want to get too hung up about the ferrite being broken. I mean, it looks it looks worse than it is. It's got a fairly clean break. There is a chunk missing out of it, but to be honest, I, I was reading up on ferrite the other day, and even if if it's got a break in it, you lose very little um, selectivity and sensitivity if you've got to glue it back together. I think it's something like ten percent if it's a clean break you lose, but. Really, with a set like this, just a basic domestic set, you're not going to um, notice any difference, really, which is good news. Right. Let's uh, make sure we get this the right way round, the right way round, otherwise we will be in stuck. Now, I always like to get a battery before I do this to hand, just to compare. always like to go, I mean this is one of my lithiums, I'm not going to plug it into the battery, I'm going to plug it into the power supply so we can see what it's doing, so the plus is that one, so the plus is the castellated connector, and that's the negative, right we're on, if you've not placed your bets then uh, too late, what are we on? So we want to be on. Let's go on medium wave. And turn her on. It's working. Well, it's noise anyway. So let's see if we can get any stations. It's picking up my phone. So it's picking up some in. So it's working. I thought it would. Can we help it out a bit? Yeah, we can. I've got my um, 
long wire up here. So because it's got a poorly ferrite, we'll just give it a bit of assistance with my external aerial. Come on. Come on. Now I think we've got, we might have a dodgy transistor that's jumping in and out there. Because it's stopped again. I'm only touching the aerial terminal. Trying. That's the ground there. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've got a dodgy transistor still. It was working, but it's um, it's died. Hmm. Interesting. It's drawing twenty milliamps, so it's about right there. But um, let's have a look in the sixties. You're struggling. Before that, because you were in college in 1970, and one of the lads had one. It could have a long production run, though, Derek. That's what I'm thinking. You're probably all right. Maybe a break by the coil on the ferrite. It could be. I mean, it's certainly... Let's um, just pop the power off, and turn it over a minute, just have a look at the aerial wires because um, all I did was touch a terminal. Which won't have caused it any problems at all, there's no uh, power running through those. Let's try that again. Hmm. Well, that's unusual. It did work, but then it's decided that it's had enough and it's not going to anymore. It was actually really loud, wasn't it? Let's try it on long wave. So we should have radio four around about there. But no, it's gone. It's gone a bit crazy. Almost like it got overloaded by the external aerial, but um, I've never had that before. Hmm, very unusual. And this is just off of my ATU, by the way. For more AF127 transistors. Thank you, Mike.
Yeah, it's just not responding at all now. I think that's um, one of the AF-117s. In the IF strip, potentially. I don't think it might be the oscillator. Is the oscillator an AF-117 as well? Let's have a look. Let's get the old homebrew signal tracer out. Let's go back to medium wave. Well, actually, no, we can stay on long wave because um, it's a hell of a mechanism on the tuning cap. Tuning cap? Not tuning cap, I meant volume pot crackers. Where's the goat? Yeah, so I should think so too. Right. Let's go back to Radio 4, which should be there. Let's clamp on. Let's have a look at these transistors. I'm not sure which is the first and which is the last, but... The amplifier section certainly seems all right. So that's probably the oscillator and then two IFs, is it? So we had it and then we've lost it for some reason. Have a quick look at the wiring. Ow. Ow. Looks like the blue is the collector. Okay. So let's get um, let's get a schematic for this a minute. Let's get a schematic up a minute. Service manual. Let's have a look. User manual. Electro Tanya's got it. There. Here we go. Nineteen sixty-six. There you are. That looks like the. Trader sheet. Let's have a look, see if we can find the original Bush one. Oh, that's the instruction manual. Yeah, that's the modern one. Oh, radio museum is not coming up as the first one. Sorry, I'm I'm not got the screen on. I'm just uh... So I have got the disc gear with all of them on, but um, can't find it. Okay, this has got the electrical 
Trader, eight schematics, let's have a look. Okay, a TR1 is also like a TR2, TR3 looks like IF, but TR1 might do IF as well. Mixer oscillator. No. TR1 is mixer oscillator, TR2, AF117, first IF amplifier. Um, 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 right, okay. What is the IF? Let's see if we can stuff the IF down through it. So you can go onto my screen now, that. there we go. <clears throat> so this is the electrical and radio trading sheet from 1966 uh, from radiomuseum.org. So it is mid 60s, isn't it? I don't know what's, what its lifetime was, but um, it's a transistor lineup. Look, TR1 is uh, AF117 mixer oscillator, TR2 first IF amp, TR3 second IF amp. And then the audio chain is OC series by the looks of it. So here's some, um, here's where we are, here's our three AF117s. So if this one is, is just gone ass up, then um, we ain't gonna get nothing through. So I can, I can try injecting the IF, I can either do it with a loop or I can stick it on the base of TR2. I don't know what the IF is though. Does it say what the IF is on this one? No, it might say it on the next sheet. Schematic two. No, so this is our output stage now. Okay. Description on layout. Four seventy kilohertz IF. Okay. So let's see if we can squeeze the um, IF out through it. So this is all the circuit layout. Look. So TR1 up here is the uh, os oscillator mixer. <coughs> TR2 is the first IF. TR3 is the second IF. So that's the area we need to be looking in, really. Right. I was going to say 470, didn't I? All right, let's stick 470 up and see what happens. Electro idiot, hello, how are you? Should have changed the capsule. It gives me something to do. So you can't do it all, Mike. I've got to, I've got to have something. But yeah, some of these caps could be dodgy, but actually, that one, that one is getting warm. That one's getting slightly warm. So yeah, that's in the output stage, but that's getting slightly warm. There's another one over here, a big one. Now we've got a bit of plastic, look. Keep that to one side. There goes my phone. Get off. Stop it. It's because I've got a signal tracer turned on still. Um, right. So we could try the old tappy tap, couldn't we? It's still turned on. Oscillator. It's still got shorts, that one. <laughs> Let me just show you that. This one. Gone. Back. Still got shorts. This one. 
No. So yeah, the oscillator still got shorts on him. <laughs> Strange how a big signal did that, wasn't that? Well, I didn't put a short on it, but a big signal killed it. Right, Let's see if it'll tune uh, Radio 4 now. Should be. Should be around here somewhere, but it's very directional radio for. There he is. And that light there will be. That's better. Oscillator. So let's try the old um, area on this. Very good with the external area on it. True, I mean, but obviously you also know that you know someone like Hardik, who's who's a change player in the last year or so, he's a lot more matured. Uh, but it is working without it anyway, so that's fine. So we need to get some. Um, we need to get Elsie's oscillator out, don't we? We need to get Elsie's oscillator out and give her another zap. We need to get Elsie's oscillator out and give her another zap. Because everybody loves a good old zapping, don't they? And everybody always asks me about zapping and always wants to see it. So let's do it again. Let me catch up with the chat. Looks like rain here in Belfast. Oh no. Be listening on Bluetooth, off for a dip. Yeah, have a good one, Danish. I don't, don't blame you. Caps should never get warm when operated within proper specs. Yeah, if it's got a short or a possible... Possible short on it. It is, it is slightly warm, that one, compared to all the others, but then it, it might just be that it's, it's warm in here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to have 60 volts up it, Mike, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Change channel we lost against India. Oh, no, Mike, did we? I thought we beat them. Or did we, we win one and they've won one? Who won the Open? I don't know, Mike, actually. Rory McElroy was... was um, drawing with, um, a, was it a, a Danish chap? 
<sighs> I can't remember. I don't know. I've not seen the news yet, though, to be honest. Have you got a bet on it, though, Mike? Oh, it's going to a shootout, Mac, is it? 200 volt caps? <laughs> Don't need 100 volts. Sign up. We well, can do it with 100 volts. Right, let's just have a look at this then. Let me get you in a bit closer for a closer look. Get the light back on again. So there he is, a little monkey. This one here. Wrong cap. Wrong cap. Wrong transistor. This is the one that's um, given us the problem. This is the oscillator AF117. Lots of um, pretty coloured legs on him. So it looks like um, collector shield, base and emitter. Base is green, so it goes basically from collector to emitter. So uh, I'm going to get that one out and see how we go. Sounds like the noise is back next door as well. Yeah, nice. Oh. Right. I've just got the these shower lorenz out of the way before I knock it over. So we'll get it out and we'll zap it. Let's um let's use as much of it as we can. So I've got my desoldering tool on the ready. Let's get him out. Let's get him on out. Let's get me eyes on. Let's get the old eyes on so I can see what I'm up to. Waiting for glorious Goodwood for your nags. Huh. The devil's 200 volt caps. Oh, 30 volts in each. I'm going to stick probably near 60 up this one, so it's make or break. A little bit of track to reinforce there, but we can sort that out. There he is. ready so let's um let's just move that out of the way and we'll get some um, we'll get set up for zapping we'll get set up for zapping now where's me zapping kit there we go. So I tend to use what have I got here? 100 volt, 100 microfarad. There you go. Looks like I've sprayed this nicely as well. So it's worth checking that these are okay because they have been used for quite a bit of zapping. Oh, let's just quickly check that on the ESR meter. Make sure we've still got 100 microfarad. Hmm, ESR's gone up a little bit. I mean, it's, <laughs> they do get some hammer, these. ESR should be a bit lower than that. That's a bit better, so we'll use this one. It's less than one ohm ESR on this one. Other ones measure it differently by the looks of it. So, I'll get you in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm up to. Um, 
Is it going to be better on the overhead camera or this one? Probably this one. Or no, we use we use the overhead camera, and I can use the other camera for um, a bit better ex explanation for you, those of you that have never um, had a go at this before. That's good fun. Well worth having a go. Okay, let's just zoom out a bit. Let's get my grotty bench in shot. I must get myself another cutting mat because this one is um, not very well. I've got loads of leads everywhere here at the moment. So what I want to do is get you over to my um, bench supply. So I moved my, I took my oscilloscope downstairs to have a look at my brother's audio gear yesterday and uh, still not put it back properly this is the problem this is the problem right okay so you can see my power supply now so let's get you in with the other camera on the power supply and I'll show you what I'm going to do to that This is my power supply. Keith, how you doing, mate? So, 0 to 32 volts, 5, 0 to 5 amps, two channels, so I've got 32 volts on each channel. So potentially I've got 64 volts I can use. I tend to use 50, really. Because in the middle here, there's a link piece, so I can link the two sections together. So I can either have two lots of 32 volts, both at 5 amps, up to 5 amps. I've got variable current, variable voltage on each side. If I join this centre one together, so if I pull that one out and those, loosen that off. Stick that bar in there. I've now joined the two, two power supplies together in series. So I've now got a 64 volt power supply. So I stick the positive in there and the negative in there. I need to push that one there so as both sides track each other. And I, I need to make sure that I've got nothing connected to my croc clips. <laughs> So they're clear. So if I turn that on now, so I can go up to 32.7 volts. So I've got 60, 65, nearly 66 volts between those, those two connectors now, yeah? So I'm gonna wind it back a bit. I usually do it about 25 volts. So I'm using 50 volts, really. I can whack the current up because uh, I'm going to give it a bit of, bit of juice up it. I'll say I don't need it. Current limited for sure, but um, stick it up about a third of the way. And uh, that's me zapping set up. So I've now got 50 volts stuck between the positive and negative. Let's go back to the uh, bench M. Let's go back to the bench. So what we need to do with this, zoom you in a little bit. This is our AF117. You can see we've got some um, four legs on there. So I'm going to take this insulation off and you'll notice that um, there's a bigger gap in between two of the legs. So you'll notice if I get some of the point that here there's a bigger gap than the rest of them. So the, the one 
here where the gap is largest this is the first pin and that's collector second one's the shield third one's the base and the fourth one's the emitter so what we need to do is we need to short between the shield and the shield is connected to this metal can so we need to short between the shield and the other three junctions but not individually because that would just blow the transistor apart we need to make sure that some they're all joined together and then we'll just blow away any of the little whiskers that are growing inside which short them out now Mike has already shorted this one so this one may go pop so I've just twisted the three legs together there look so I've twisted the collector the base and the emitter together and I've left the shield wire out so that's not part of this because we're going to short between the two with with this capacitor charged up so what I need to do is um, join those together so let me just put it down on the bench so you can see what I'm up to I ought to really get a soldering iron to do that didn't I and I'm on 400 degrees because I've been working on some pretty hefty MOSFETs this week I have a video to come on that at some stage because I've um, I've got a Mercedes ECU in here that I'm working on at the moment which is proven to be a bit of a beast to say the least a beast to say the least <laughs> rhyming slang that so yeah all I'm going to do is I'm going to solder those three legs together not a 390 I'm not let's turn that down a bit Let's go back to 350. So I'm just going to get a bit of solder. So those legs are now joined. Yeah? Soldered together, but the shield wire is not touching any of those legs and is uh, totally free okay I'm sort of going slow a lot of you have seen this before but a lot haven't seen it so what we need to do next is we need to connect a capacitor to this so I'm using 100 microfarads 100 volts because I'm using 50 volts I don't want to stick a 30 volt cap on it because it will go bang and what I, I tend to do and it doesn't matter which way you you solder this to here but I, I tend to try and solder the positive wire to the three and then the negative wire of the capacitor I leave free to short against here so that's the next uh, trick is to solder this onto here if I can get it in a shot so let's just zoom you out a bit so you can see a bit more what I'm doing <coughs> excuse me right, so I'm going to solder this he says ah stay should have done that on me blue mat really but there we go so now um, that's connected So we're ready to go zapping. All right. So let's um, let's zoom you in a bit on the power supply, and then I'll get that um, in picture in picture. Uh, get up there, monkey! Get up there. Uh, let's stick I'll, I'll stick me in here as well so you can you can see my ugly mug as well there we are uh, I'm over here the lights a bit strange there. It's because it's um focusing for this lighting for the window not me right we're ready to go don't forget to tap it let's see a bang hopefully you won't see a bang hopefully no bang no bang <laughs> right okay 
So what we need to do now is we need to connect this up. Now, this is the crucial bit. You do, don't want to be connecting your positive to the negative side of the cap because it will go bang. So you need to connect your positive to the positive side of the cap. And you need to connect the negative to the negative side of the cap. And trust me, I have connected this the wrong way around more than once, <laughs> many times, and it's not fun. Just turn that desoldering tool off a minute. Right, so the idea is that what we're going to do is we're going to charge this up. Let's just get, let me get me out of the way. Should I get me out of the way? Let me just zoom out a bit. So the idea is we're going to charge this cap up with this power lead on it. So really, we're, we're not, it doesn't really matter about charging the cap. We're just going to touch that to there. That's the plan. We're going to touch the shield wire to the negative pin there. Very gently. It's a bit scary. I tend to do it with the probes. I'll touch it like that. with The probes in my hand. And that should clear it. Now what, what we haven't done, and I should have done this first, is we should have really checked to see if there is a short between the shield and those junctions. Because if it's a short between any of the other junctions, if they're shorted together, you're not going to clear that without killing the cap. Killing the transistor, I mean. Right, so we need to turn the power supply on. Power supply's on, 50 volts. So we now need to touch these two. And we might see a little spark. We might see that end flash off at high speed over that side. Or we might see nothing and we saw nothing okay so there's probably been a little tiny snick inside that can and that's that's our short burnt away simple as that 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 is zapped now so we need to turn that off you can zap it again just to make sure and see if there's anything left in that capacitor voltage wise I do like to discharge the cap as well, but you don't have to if you're, if you're feeling lucky. I like to discharge it before I um, solder it on. Yeah, so we've still got 16 volts set on that cap. So still 16 volts. And to be honest, 16 volts is enough to zap that. You can zap it with 9 volts, really. So you, you could just do it with a 9-volt battery, a PP3. So let's just... Um, Short that out. We should use a resistor, really. A bit, a bit gentler on it. So we get this resistor. What's this? 220 ohms. Yeah, okay. A bit, bit aggressive, maybe, but not as bad as short now. So I'm just going to short that out with the uh, resistor. Say so this is a 220 ohm. That should now have no voltage on it. Yeah, 0.1 of a volt. Because what we need to do, that sounded like it went bang, but it didn't. So apologies if that made you jump. Now we're going to solder that negative to the ground, sorry, to the shield wire. Okay. So now we're, um, we're connected up. So our three, three junctions are connected to the positive of this cap and the shield wire is connected to the negative. So we're going to connect it back up again, again, making sure that we're the right, the right way wound. Let's get that solder wire out of the way. So this might go bang, you never know, but let's pop it on. No, not drawn any current. So potentially we're zapped, but all this is a bit of a belt and braces job. So I'm just going to get um, a screwdriver and I'm just going to give it a few whacks. Now I have my power supply. Dip 
dip there slightly maybe. So I'm still connected across it. I've got 50 volts sat on this and this cap. So all that's doing is just making sure there's none like really close to the edge that might cause us a problem in the future. So we can now take that off. So we've still got voltage in this. What have we got sat in it? So it's dropping, it's dropping 12 volts at the moment, sat on it. So let's just um, stick the cap on that and get rid of that. Again, you don't need to do this if you don't want to. I'm just, it's just how I do it. I've done loads of it. This is the tin whiskers process. It definitely is, Wayne the legendary tin whiskers process so this is this is um potentially sorted so just desolder that get rid of the uh, so I'll put that on so i don't flick any of my eyes ow so I flicked it on my hand instead so desolder these there's sometimes like this one, Mike has zapped this, but it still had whiskers on it. So uh, sometimes you do have to do it more than once. And sometimes you just absolutely kill the um, transistor dead. So uh, let's, get, um, let's get some cameras sorted here. Let's get some cameras sorted here. Let's just get rid of me for a second. I'm just going to put you back on the main camera down on the bench. Okay. Right. We need to make sure firstly that um, we've got a transistor still. So for that, I'm just going to use my peak transistor tester. You could use a multimeter on diode mode and just check that you've got some um, junctions there still, but we've got the peak, so that's what we're gonna use. So again, you're not connecting to the shield wire. You're just connecting to the three junctions. So collector, base, and emitter. So when I push the button, it should come up with a bipolar transistor so that's um hope hopefully we haven't killed it if it says uh -uh, it's dead right so we've got one we've got pmp germanium bijunction transistor and it's got a cracking hfe of 265 nice scroll down we'll have a leakage 0 0.029 so that's fine uh, silicone you'll never get leakage silicone should read zero but germanium will change depending on the temperature which is why the fuzz face people like them with their guitar effects pedals so that one's a transistor still which is good news it's good news that it's a transistor but we need to make sure that we've got no shorts so in with the uh, multimeter ohms so what i'm going to do i'm going to test between the shield wire and these other junctions and it should be open circuit on all of them it should stay ol there should be absolutely no reading it's on auto range in this so if it's anything up in the mega ohms it will still measure it if, if it's anything at all then it's not zapped properly and we'd have to do it again so I need one probe on, on the shield wire or the case, because they're both connected, don't forget. That's connected inside the transistor and uh, one on each terminal. So I'm gonna do that. Can I get that in, in the shot as well? Mm, not really, there's not enough depth of field on that camera for that, but you can sort of roughly see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna hold one, one the shield wire down. I'm gonna touch these other ones. So firstly, the collector nothing base nothing an emitter nothing so that that is zapped 
and it's still a transistor, which is great news. I mean, there's another one here that I've got on the bench. It just dropped out the thing. So let's just check this one as well. This one, I don't know anything about this one. It's just one I've pulled out of my box. So let's check this one. So again, I'm just holding down the shield wire collector. Base. And emitter. No, so that one's already been zapped. Let's get another one. I'm going to see if I can find one that's got shorts now. That I won't find one, will I? This one looks a bit poorly. Okay. Let's try this one. <laughs> no, it's fine. The problem is I, I sap these and I don't actually write down what I've done. Mm. No, not um not showing any shorts on any of these so far. Typical, isn't it? This one, what have I got? I've got something written on this one. I'm not sure which one it is. Is it that one? Let's try another one. What I tend to do is I just pull these and I'll replace them with um, Russian ones or something else. No, nothing on that one. Wait, this one. It's typical, I'm not going to be able to find one now, am I? Can't even see which one's the shield on this one, because I've got too much tape around it, okay. <clears throat> when I've got so many of these that are measuring good, it makes me wonder whether I've got a problem with one of the leads on my test meter, perhaps. Because uh, I'd be very surprised if all of these have not got shorts on them. Ah, OK. <clears throat> yeah, we've got a 14 ohm short there between the shield and the collector. Base. Yeah, so we've got 480 ohms short there. And the emitter, 2.2 mega ohms. So yeah, that's that's basically a AF117 with shorts. Nice. So yeah, my multimeter is working. I've just got some good AF117s in there. But even if they're measuring measuring okay now, it's still worth zapping them because um, they will fail in the future. But I've possibly zapped those. I went through a phase of zapping everything before I put it in that drawer and then gave up on it. So it's a bit, a bit hit and miss at the moment whether they've been zapped or not. But um, the good news is, is our um, transistor is working. You've never seen it done? Yeah, I have shown it quite a few times, but if you haven't seen it, then um, cheers. <laughs> Harvey, rip shop and torture. Yes, punish him. Right, so I think the collector was blue, wasn't it? Let's just we'll put them in the same same order that they came out in. So emit, emitter is yellow. Base was green. And the shield was black. So there we are, ready to go back in. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I should do a separate zapping video, shouldn't I, really? But I've done so many on live streams that. Um, I really, I suppose, ought to put that I've zapped them. 
All right, so that needs to go back in the same position. So just popping that back in the board. You can't quite see that, but uh, just popping that back in. It's always one. Let's have a look that is a bit Are they all poking through? Are you all poking through? So we've got a bit of a dodgy track there. Yeah, they're all poking through. So what I'll do with that dodgy track is I'll just bend the transistor that way. That'll hold that in a bit nicer. So I'm just giving the legs a little bit of a bend just to hold them in place. Before we uh, solder them up. Where I buy bench power supply? I bought it um, on eBay, that one actually. Um, and uh, I, they don't make that one anymore, but... Um, it's a Tenma 72-8700A. I bought it from eBay, but they are far now and places like that all sell them. It's a fairly common type of power supply. You just need a two-channel power supply. We don't, you don't. You could, you could get yourself a high power power supply. <laughs> Right, so this has already been soldered once, so I shouldn't need to add any more flux into it because Mike's already uh, done the honours for us. So let's um, just solder this one back in a minute. There we go. Let's give it a bit of isopropyl. Get rid of the flux and that on it. It's got lots of ingrained flux on that actually. And these these little brushes are handy. RS do a pack of five for about a fiver, I think. They're not expensive. Well they did, but they last forever. <laughs> this is my first one, I got a pack of five. So yeah, nice and shiny. Nice. Somewhere I've got me blue roll. I've tidied up, see, this is a problem. You tidy up and you can't find nothing. So just go over that to get rid of the flux. Nice, there we are. Done. Oh, you've got one of those ones that's got a PC um, connection so you can see it on the screen, Wayne. 30 volts is enough. You can do it with 30. Pe people zap them with 9, so you can easily do it with 30. Yeah, you can do it with 30 volts, no problem at all. Or you can connect, if you want to do more, you can just collect, connect a load of PP3s up. Just connect them all up in series, and you know the more you've got in there, the higher the voltage you've got. Um, you don't need a bench power supply at all to do that. Right, we need to sort out this um, ferrite. It's a pig of a job to do it when it's in the radio, really, but... It's very difficult to take it out, that's the trouble. Um, can I get that out? Okay. Right, how are we doing? A rock, rock seed 
RS305P. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's we buy these big old linear DC power supplies for doing radio stuff. Um, Wayne, I, suppose, I don't know if, if the power supply you've got is a switch mode or not, but unfortunately when you're doing radio work, it's got to be um, linear because the switch mode kicks up so much noise, you can't, can't hear the radio stations when you're trying to tune something in. So, um, yeah, got to be a linear power supply, really, for working on radios. It might well be a linear one, actually. I don't, I've not heard of that one. Right, used to use seven PP3s, yeah. Seven was, was the optimum mic, was it? George, George um, has got over his COVID, if that's what you mean, um, Harvey. George is clear of COVID, apparently. Unfortunately, Colin has managed to get it. Is Colin in? Colin's normally in. I think I did say hello to Colin earlier, actually. Yeah, I think Colin's in. But yeah, sadly, Colin has now managed to get it. It's very, uh, it's, it's very much on the up over here again. COVID. Right, we need to see if this radio works. What we need to do is, first of all, is to sort the um, power supply because what we don't want to be doing now is connecting our radio up to 50 volts because that will definitely cause it some issues. <laughs> and I, I, well, I haven't done that before, but I have, um, I have left the black one in the right hand connection and the other one in the other and wondered why it didn't work. Right, so let's come back to nine volts. Let's connect back up again and hopefully we're in business. So the castellated one was positive and the flat one is negative, okay. Right, let's zoom you out a bit and let's see if this works again. So, where's my aerial again? <clears throat> so if we just connect the ground to the chassis for a second. It's gonna let me. So I'm just connected. I've got the I've got an earth spike outside on my long wire. Touch that to there. Yeah, understandably, you know. Cherish every that 
he's gone through today and over the week, and it's a fantastic achievement. But you can hear the crowd, they want him to lift the jug. He's not Jordan Henderson. Who is it? He's not going to do it. He's not going to do the little skip shimmy. Although he did lift it. Fair play to him. He's a major <laughs> champion, though. He really is. He's gone over to the crowd on the right-hand side of the team and showed it to them, and he's now coming back. Who is it? Who won? Actually, where the pin position was uh, for him making his birdie on 18, and he has turned to the galleries first of all. That's a really nice touch, actually. He's turned to the crowd to lift the claret jog up before he turns back to the photographer. Who won? Very shortly, there'll be a whole lot Who won? of TV interviews for him to do, and at the moment, our and R&A official is a man alone with the Clara Jug on that green, and he walks now with that purple shirt, a white cap and white trousers, holding the Clara Jug in his right hand, he's walking over to start his TV interviews, and whilst he is interviewed by them, John Murray is going to talk to his caddy. Yes, this is Sam Pinfold. And you are the caddy to the Open champion. <laughs> you look as though you can't believe it. I still can't really believe it, mate. Watching this presentation sort of makes it sink in a bit more, but uh, I think it's so special. Who was it? Probably wasn't there. He deserved it. Uh, just hit every shot that was needed and did the right things at the right time. And just Smith won. Encouraged to pull up every shot and back himself. So, a lot of fun to work for. What was he like all the, all the way around? Oh. Tell us about the, the focus. I thought video. Rory had got it. I've got some foreign skip coming in. Do a long wave then. So can we reach long wave with this? And certainly, uh, we've sorted it out now. Good old Elsie, she's back with us. Let's just have a play around long wave. Oscillator sounds a bit whistly on long wave. Radio 4. 
and it was six years old. And we both had um, an end of the sofa each in the middle. It's a bit whistly, isn't it? Is it that? No. Might be we need to tweak medium, uh, long wave, I mean. My connections here aren't great, really. Sounds a bit whistly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing. Yeah, I think the long wave needs a little tweak. It's when when I say warm, it's lukewarm, Doug. It's not uh, hot as such. It's lukewarm, but yeah, it is. But that is in the output, to be fair. It's just this one down here. In fact, it's actually on the output circuit, so it, it, it probably needs a recap. But the main thing is our um, oscillator transistor is stable now, but although it does need a little tweak by the sound of it. Let's get me plastic trimmer a minute. Let's just give it a little move. Let's see if we can stop that wobbly thing going on. Now that's going to be the main, it's going to be long wave, which will be one of these up here, I expect. I've got the circuit, so I should. Is that the trimmer or is it around the other side? Now they're around that side. It's going to be one of these, that's back. Ah, right, okay, no there. It could be my aerial's overloading it. Actually, Les, that sounds better now. I took the aerial off. <laughs> Yeah, it's just my aerial, uh, my aerial overloading it, um, Les. Mike! <laughs> Mrs. Demon. Yeah, no worries, mate. And thanks again, Mike, for donating this radio. And we'll have to sort out, see what we're going to do with it. We might send it on up to Sean to have a play with, give him something to do. He could have a look at the cosmetic side of it. Can he likes doing the cosmetics, Sean? That's one of his favourite jobs, I think. I mean, I don't mind doing the cosmetics, but I like um, messing around the electronics probably more than I do the cosmetic side of it, depending what it is, really. No, wrong. Where's me Nikon? Ah, oh, there we are. That's the I was looking for the for wrong camera. So cheers, Mike, and thanks very much for the super chats again, as always. And Rich A, thank you very much. And I think Danish native as well, thank you very much. Stream Elements. Tip, thank you very much for the tips. Yeah. Hey, remember your folks listened to that station when you were a kid, loved it. Which one's that, Wayne? Radio 4 or um, 
RTE, or there's a French station you can get as well on Longwave. But we can have a look at the alignment. I want to try and get this um, ferrite. So France is orientated different to the band spread. I'm just running through band spread now, but I can't get Radio 4 on band spread, so this looks like it needs a bit of an alignment. Let's just go back to the long wave again. I'm sure we can... So Radio 4 should be around there, but it's back there. That is the archers! That's a classic theme tune, that is. Natasha needs reassurance, and Tracy is hiding her feelings when we return to Ambridge at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We've comedy from Alexi Shaler. There you go. Look ahead to Newstam. The Archers. How long has the Archers been going? Many, many years. Right. Let's get this ferrite glued. Um, because you can't really do an alignment if the ferrite's broken. Because you're just not going to get... I mean, it's still working, as you can hear, with a broken ferrite. So, you don't have to glue this. But um, let's see if we can get it glued. Now, this is either going to work or it's not going to work. Um, it's a bit hit and miss gluing ferrites. But it does work. So let's just get the camera a bit lighter. Okay. So you can see our ferrite rod area is broken. So you've got two coils on the ferrite. The closely wound coil here is the long wave coil. And the one that's more evenly spaced, or spaced further apart, is uh, medium wave. Took me a while to work that out. No one really explained it, but yeah. The, um, the tighter wound one is uh, long wave and the lesser, well, the, the wider spread apart one is medium wave. Because long wave's a longer wavelength, so you need a longer wire for it. So, anyway. What we need to do is um, give this a clean up first in between the brake, so I'm just going to use a bit of isopropyl and a cotton bird. How are we doing for time? Because I've got a 1917, right, so I've got really to about eight o'clock, people, so we've got time. So I'm just giving that a bit of a clean up. That's got some sort of debris on it. I don't know what's got into it, but um, it is a fairly clean brake. Everyone likes a clean brake. <laughs> Band spread was for Radio Luxembourg. Okay, right, no worries. It's just it's got 200 
Oh, 200 meters. Ah, okay. Yeah, my mistake then. You're right. I thought it was 200 kilohertz, but it's not. It's in meters. So yeah, I'm not going to get some radio four on that, am I? But the dial is off. I mean, it's radio four should be on 1500 meters, but it's coming in around 1400 meters. So I do need to get that some um, sorted. So, uh, the con control recessed was just the fact that those screws were undone. So that's um, that's why. Shouldn't be a problem once it's all screwed back together. Right, that looks cleaner now. Let me just see what sort of join we're going to get on it. It's very difficult to gauge really where it came apart. We do need to get a really tight joint on it for it to glue. Okay, it does sort of come together about there. That's really tight there. So that's a good place. Let me get the super glue. The weapon of choice. <laughs> no, it's got, got a massive great pile of glues all ready to cascade onto me here. Just some normal super glue, nothing fancy. But, uh, there seems to be a lot of barking going on right there. What's going on? I might have to quickly skip to the loo before I glue that back because it's better to glue on an empty bladder. That's no, just someone's dog across the way. Yeah, better to glue on an empty bladder. So let's uh, quickly skip to the loo and I'll be back. Right, that's better. Room for another beer now. Another, another alcohol free from my bucket, which has still got ice in it. Still got ice, ice, ice. But it is, it is starting to melt now, look. It is starting to melt. But ice and cold. So I'm going to get another one of these in a minute and then we'll have a go at gluing that um, ferrite back together. Yeah, the gel form, I don't find it so good Danish for this. Um, I don't find it so good. It doesn't seem to go off as well. I mean, the runnier it is, the more it gets into the like real small areas, a little tiny parts of the break so I have tried gluing these with gel and I haven't had a lot of success in fact I gave up with the gel so I find the, the regular stuff tends to be best for doing this ah uh, what Vince yes 
Yeah, yeah. Vince, Vince's Rolls Royce series is brilliant. I've been commenting on that. I've been watching that with interest. I mean, everybody would love to play with an old Rolls Royce, wouldn't they? So um, let's um, let's glue in. Let's glue in. Let's get them glued. But now this is where I glue my fingers together normally. So no, uh, no encouraging me to glue my fingers together. So as I say, the key is getting it absolutely. You don't need a load of this glue, just a little bit. Make sure it covers the whole area. I'm just using the nozzle to um, move it around. I'm not putting more glue on it. You don't need a lot because um, if you put too much on, it won't set. So line them up. Come on, please, please. Come on, come on, come on. You'll feel when it goes in, ah, there, right, that's it. There. So I've got a good tight joint there. I just need to hold it here for about an hour. Till it goes off. And if you can get if you can get the ferrite back in exactly the same position, it will stick. And then oh you little call you Right, okay. Oh I did have it perfect, but um I let it go too soon. I let it go too soon. Uh just wasn't quite there. Mm, that's where it is. So in the past, I've also um, put heat shrink tape around it. I've done these with hot melt glue. Uh, how long do you hold it for? My fingers are going to be like jelly by the time I finish this. Ah. Oh, there it is. There it is. I've got a bit of a Bit of a dent in my finger, but um, he's joined. It's um, it's ferrite. It's iron, iron dust. I think, isn't it? Um, So it is definitely joined. The glue needs oxygen to cure and moisture to cure. No, it's it's um, ferrite. Ugh, what, how can I how can I describe ferrite? I mean, this is a ferrite ring here, so it's like an iron iron dust that's compressed back into a form. It's difficult to explain. I, I'm sure someone here will be able to explain it a lot better than I can. But it's basically, it's an iron core. So let me just have a closer look at that. Now it's pretty much dry. Yeah, I've got a pretty good joint on that. I might stick some I might stick some um, hot glue around that just to give it a bit of extra support. I find that does work very well. Probably won't now I'm live, but you know, you can try. You definitely can bond it with an iron, Wayne. If you can come up with some sort of um, 
some sort of solder that will glue these back together, you'll be, uh, you'll be a rich man. Right, I need to get the lid on that look. That's the first mistake. Need to get the lid on it. That's the first mistake I've made because that's probably going to go off. So I'm just getting the uh, blue mat out because I like to keep the hot glue gun, which is needs replacing. I've got an arrow one somewhere, the professional type one, but I can't find it anywhere. I noticed Bosch um, make a glue gun as well, which I think CPC are doing it for a fairly good price. So I might pick one of those up because this one is falling apart, really. Bought it years ago in Trago Mills, if anyone knows uh, the Southwest. I'll stick that in, make sure it's on high. Let's let that heat up. And I'm just going to dribble a bit of hot glue down around that. And then I'm going to just uh, finish it off with the, uh, what's his name? Could you reinforce it with some JB Weld on the outside? I could, Doug. I could, but um, this is easier and a lot quicker. JB Weld, really, you need to leave it 24 hours to go off. Oh, this is... Right, okay, I'm trying to... Um, you can buy spray to cure super glue. Yes, I've seen that. You can buy... Um, I mean, that would be probably the best bet, wouldn't it? So Anthony has given us the lowdown on what ferrite is, I think. Compound consists of mixed oxide of iron and one or more other metals, which has ferry magnetic properties and is used in high-frequency electrical components such as aerial. Metallurgy, a form of pure iron with a body-centered cubic crystal structure occurred in, in low-carbon steel. You didn't realize I could what, um, Les? Glue, glue them back together? Hmm. Yeah. I don't really want to poke that about too much, just in case. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for the gun, the, the rubbishy glue gun to heat up yeah it's getting warm let's get some more uh, sticks because it's bound to collapse yeah you can Les I mean um, even if you break one of those ferrite cores you can still um, glue them back together apparently and you just lose about 10% While that's heating up, let's see if I can find that article I was reading. Um, uh, I wonder if it's in my history. Recently, because Graham's iPad, that's what it'll be. wasn't yesterday oh it might have been balance I've been looking at balance because I'm going to be doing um, or putting up an aerial here very soon myself and Les have put up um, a 12 meter mast out in the field at the back here <clears throat> I've got to go and buy some ladder line and we're going to try and put um, a multi-band wire antenna on the top of it i think we're looking at a doublet les isn't that right but we're going to see if we can get enough wire out to get it on top band so we're going to see if we can get a top wire doublet in there i don't think we're going to get a top wire in i don't think i've got enough room to get a top wire in. i've had to stick it right out in the middle of the field which wouldn't have gone down well so i'm just trying to find this article that i was reading on um, ferrite and all the rest of it. I've still got to get a plastic enclosure. Toids Info, is it that one? Micro metals. I did so much research on this. Done my editing in the end. <laughs> Les very kindly. Les is the man. Les knows all about this stuff.
right. <laughs> no, I can't find it now. I still reckon your 200-2 will, will just do, do the job, Les, just as well as this one I've ordered from eBay. I don't think there's going to be a massive amount of difference, to be fair. So I was looking for it now. I can't find it off the top of my head. But there was there was an article I found written by somebody who was uh, talking about the different types of um, ballon, uh, ferrite, toroid materials. Get it out, Graham. Dear, oh dear. Toroid. Is that it? <laughs> no, can't find it. Oh well, it was worth worth a look, really. Epoxy. Did my Swede in? He did. Yeah, I think we 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 can do it as a, we're doing it as an inverted V. Um, Nick is the is the plan. Right, blobby blobby time. Touchy touchy nasty burny. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah, burn. Ooh, burn. Don't do this at home, people. But if, uh, if it's still molten, you can mould it with your finger if you're lucky. Just lick your finger. Lick it and stick it. I'm sure that was a stamp advert back in the day. So I've got that side done. Let's see what access I've got on the other side. I've still got the speaker connected, Graham. Yeah, not a lot of access on this side, but I should be able to get a little squirt in there. <sighs> on my finger, on my finger. Again, lick it, lick it and stick it. Right, so I've now got a blob of um, hot glue on both sides and lots of it everywhere else. <laughs> so that's just giving it that extra bit of reinforcement really so if it gets knocked if i send it off in the post it's not going to break back on there that's that's the plan anyway um ideally i want it all the way around but i can't get in there i might better give it a bit of hot air and just get it to melt down in there a bit let's try that Give it a bit of hot air just to help it around. What are we on there? We want to be a bit lower than that. What temperature does hot glue melt? That's better. Nice. So make sure I'm not 
blobbing it out the other side. Smell that around as well. There, okay, so I've got hot glue all the way around it now. Excellent. Look, it grew there. Look, it grew there. So that cool down a minute. So all I've done is I've put a sleeve of hot glue all the way around it now. So it's super glued and hot glued. So in theory, that's job done. I'm happy with that. So let's um, pull the plug on the hot glue gun before I get in a big sticky mess with it. Double it with open band feed. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I mean, I should be able to tune top, but I'm a can tune top band. I oh, well, used to be able to tune top band on my um, inverted, inverted L. We're going to stick an inverted V with a doublet on top and um, bring ladder line right the way back to the shack here. I've got to make up a ballon though to convert it to use on my ATU. So that's um, that's the issue. I have got a ballon in. Um, I have got a ballon in another ATU up there, but it's not great. It's um, it's an MFJ, and I, I can. I can sort of recall having problems with it back in the day. So yeah, I've got just under a hundred, I've got just under a hundred meters to get back to the shack. So coax would be quite, quite a loss, but hundred meters on ladder line is, um, should be a lot less. Just got to get it and probably terminate the ladder line outside and bring it in inside with a coax. But I've got to have a chat with Les about that. And I've got to go and buy all the bits yet because a uh, hundred foot of ladder line is not cheap. Well, nothing's cheap these days, is it? But some um, amateur radio bits and pieces for building stuff isn't cheap. Probably cheaper to buy them in pre-made aerial, but oh well. Oh well. Bill, how you doing, mate? How are you doing, Bill? Been a very boaty noy, no, boaty noy. What's a goat gone? We need a bit of goat action. That's what the goat thinks. He's even shown us his backside. Look, still got his Christmas bow on. Mix ferrite powder with the glue. Yeah, could do. But then you, would you get such a close fit then if you mix fire powder with the glue? You're going to sneak it into the house before your wife gets back from shopping. <laughs> 53. I mean, I've, I've sort of read, Nick, that the one-to-one -one ballon is the best bet, but I'm not 100% sure why, because they do mention you can do it with a four-to-one or a one-to-one. -one. Um, so, yeah, I... I've just sort of read that a one-to-one -one is best. But um, Les has had pulled something up on a voltage ballon, but I thought the current ballon was the best bet. But again, I really don't know. I've not built any anything with ballons or matching transformers or anything like that in it before. 
Is it um, a console radio then, Bill? The the uh, Philco fifty three nine sixty. Is it a big old console radio? Because I managed to sneak one in here. Well, I didn't sneak one. I I, I run it by Mrs. Cruncher before I bought it. But um, I need to refinish the cabinet. I was going to do that this summer. Right, that should be cooled down enough now to leave it over there without it leaching out. Stuff everywhere. The hot glue should have gone off. Have you tried a loop antenna? Um, this is a transmitting antenna, Electro Idiot. It's um, for transmitting. Not really for receiving. Loop antennas are very good, um, but they tend to be more for, for rec receiving, don't they? Pardon me, I've never tried a loop antenna though. I will say that. So the answer is no, I haven't tried a loop antenna. I sort of answered that in a cryptic way, didn't I? Right, so we've got our ferrite nice and firm now. That ain't going anywhere. So how are we doing for time quarter two? Yeah, we're not really going to have time to do an alignment on it. But um, let's have a quick look at the alignment info. Oh, it's a big table set, right? Okay. Uh, where's our dismantling circuit description? Okay, probably. Ah, where's that gone to then? Obviously, closed the window ground, didn't you? I want to alignment. We've got two alignment infos. We've got that one. And that one. Okay. The circuit alignment continued. So let's look at the alignment. Um, I'm not going to have a chance to do this today. Let's pop that in full screen. And in, oh, get back. Thank you. So let me, I better, better um, just check that I am. I have got you on that screen. Yes, I have. Let's just take me out of there as well for a minute. Let's just go full screen again. So we need a 15 ohm output meter. Oh, of course, for the um, in place of the speaker, a one watt range. So we've got an output meter. We've got a really old Marconi one, which is great. A hundred KP. So is that a hundred thousand picofarads and ten picofarad capacitors and an eight K two resistor? Okay, so this is sort of like making up some sort of dummy area, was it? So RF alignment can be carried out without removing the chassis from the camera. Well, place a speaker. The meter is connected across the speaker. Now we've got that. Set the volume control to maximum. That's why you want the um, the output meter and not the speaker. During light, reduce to input to keep output of 50 milliwatts. IF tune 3 and track 400 to. Uh, Align IFT three, two, and one in that order for maximum audio output. So we're, we're trimming for maximum, which is always good. So RF, pretty straightforward. What do we need this weird resistor network in that for then? Oh, here we go. 
to inject uh, 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 just via to junction R1 SA is it R1 SA or R J SA I can't really that see that probably uh, I'm not sure R1 SA where that is I'll have to have a look at the uh, other schematics By a hundred, that's probably a hundred NF, isn't it? A line three, two, one. Uh. Trim each IFT only once. Outer peak is correct one. Outer peak is correct one. So that's screwing it outwards. Sometimes you get a sort of a double hump, it, it'll tune twice, I suppose. So, uh, 30% modulated, 400 kilohertz. A lot of these old manuals use 400 kilohertz, don't they? I always thought that some, um, well, one 400 hertz i've always found a lot of the more modern stuff is one kilohertz isn't it mm. kick a bucket and then we've got the luxembourg button so push the luxembourg button interesting so the luxembourg button is obviously the band spread button inject 1439 and adjust l8 9 10 and c3 check on Luxembourg transmission well we haven't got that unfortunately I don't think there's anything else we can tune that to can we as a as a we might better we might better squeeze it a bit further could we set it on radio 4 so we could have it as a radio 4 button no because that's 198 kilohertz isn't that this is one 1.4 megahertz so yeah is there any stations around that frequency i think there is isn't there so we could tune it to uh we could trim it to a different station than luxembourg because luxembourg is no more anyway i digress don't i i'm just going on i was just having a quick look at the alignment that looks pretty straightforward there is another set of alignment instructions here from the trader sheet I do like the trader sheets and they do go a little bit more detail than the ERT. So yeah, probably the trader sheet one would be the way to go, but I'll see if I can find the original uh, manual and maybe look at going through the um the alignment procedure on it. No, wrong one. <sighs> Try that. <laughs> Right, let's uh, catch up here. Big table set. JB Weld, some say, has powdered iron in its epoxy mix. It could be. Mm. I do, um, I have got JB World, I'd use it a lot for stuff. So 53960 Bill Sane is medium wave and eight separate band spread shortwave bands. Whoa! Eight separate band spread shortwave bands. You last heard that the Luxembourg transmitter was being used by the Chinese. They're all over the bands, aren't they? So much, um, so many stations on there. But it's, you know, it's, it's good that people are using the shortwaves. I know people say, oh, it's China, but end of the day, they're using the shortwaves. If they keep using them, they'll keep them going, won't they? They will keep them going. 
Right, so we need to sort out what we're going to do with this radio. Um, I could leave it as it is. I could leave it exactly as it is and ship it off to Sean, Mr. Man Cave Workshop. And uh, we could leave him to do the capacitors in it. Um, I don't think he's going to have the kit to do the alignment on it. So uh, would changing the capacitors alter the alignment? I don't think so. I'm not touching any of the low value caps. But um, let's just turn it around that way. I can zoom in on it and uh, you can have a look. So the capacitor that I said was getting slightly warm was this one down here. Let's use a different color pointer because that one's um, for that. This one here, that was the one that was getting a little bit warm and say so that is in the output section. These back here are sort of in the oscillator section. This one might be in the IF section. This is the IF strip here. I assume it's that one, that one, and that one. It's the three they want us to adjust. Mm, not 100% sure. I'd need to look that up on those. But yeah, it's got to be gonna be that one that one and that one I would assume the IF maybe this one alters it as well but yeah so there's the capacitor hiding up the top there that you can just about see there's another one there another one there that one there this one this one and this one so you can see these these are quite discolored can you see the difference between these two now i would say they're exactly the same brand of capacitor they've both got the same screen printing on them you know the type is the same so i'd say these are both phillips but this this one is looking nice and blue this one has gone like a real pale blue so you know, you wouldn't have had any light in here, I wouldn't have thought, to make these go pale. So maybe they got a little bit warm, I don't know. But bear in mind that these these transistors originally would have had shorts on them. So they may have stressed that area of the circuit a little bit. We've also got these lovely carbon resistors. These little nasty things there. Let's just get you in a little bit closer. You see what I mean about the different colour? These these ones here, like this here, these are uh, mustard, mullard mustard caps, and they they never really go wrong. I'm sure someone's had them go wrong, but I've never yet found one that's bad. Every one I've pulled and tested has always been good. And there's there's a couple more down here. Look, there's more over here. There's a weird sort of, I don't think that's an electrolytic, that's a ceramic up on the volume control just out of shot. And we've got a tubular one there, that's ceramic, not ceramic, poly. So Mike has zapped the transistor, just that one just needed a final zappage. Yeah. Doesn't need a lot doing to it really. I've glued the ferrite now, that's done. So you need to do an alignment and um, the caps, really, that's it. Caps and alignment. Yes, how are you? Good to see you in there, mate. Yeah, it's getting warm over here, yes, but nowhere as hot as what you've got over there. You know, we. We're up in the 30s over here, which is probably nothing for you. <laughs> that would be like a, a nice, a nice cool temperature for you, yes, I expect. <laughs> but yeah, a few jobs left to do, but um, pretty much we've got some cosmetic stuff to do to try and get this thing back together. Um, I just also noticed that there's a broken off piece here and a screw missing 
that's part of the case assembly so yeah you see there's a piece piece broken out of there I mean, it might be that's what this piece here came from yeah it looks like there's a screw thread in that so that's broken off of there at some stage but nothing that can't be glued back together I think there's hope for Elsie, don't you? Elsie Elsie lives. <laughs> Elsie lives. Right. I've got to shoot. I've got to go and have my tea, and then I've got to drop, drop, drop John over the road into Evie's car. Well, not being MOT tonight, but he's dropping it off tonight so as he can uh, get it MOT'd in the morning. So uh, I'm pretty much done now. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much for the tips and the super chats and uh, any new subscribers. And I had Chris uh, subscribe to me on Patreon the other week. So thank you very much, Chris, for subscribing to me on Patreon. And to my other patrons, thank you very much for helping to support the channel. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Give it a thumbs up and um, I'll catch you next Sunday, if not before. If you're a patron, then I will catch you in the week. So bye for now. Have a good one.